The Law of Moses Did Serve to Strengthen Their Faith in Christ by Hiram Andrus In ancient times, the Lord gave rebellious Israel the Law of Moses for a divine purpose. The Apostle Paul wrote, Wherefore, the Law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. From Adam to Moses' prophets, taught that the gospel of Jesus Christ was a divine plan by which man could be forgiven of personal sins and be sanctified by divine powers of truth, light, and life, so that he could bear the presence of God and partake of his glory. After having received the sanctifying law for Israel, Moses destroyed the tablets upon which it was written when he returned from Mount Sinai and found the Israelites practicing idolatry. He later obtained other tablets. But of the law that was written thereon, God said, It shall not be according to the first, for I will take away the priesthood out of their midst. Therefore, my holy order and the ordinances thereof shall not go before them, for my presence shall not go up in their midst, lest I destroy them. By means of the holy priesthood, that is, by the systems of laws, ordinances, covenants, and programs that pertain to the Melchizedek priesthood, Man may enter the presence of God and partake of his glory. The Lord explained, Now this Moses plainly taught to the children of Israel in the wilderness and sought diligently to sanctify his people that they might behold the face of God. But they hardened their hearts and could not endure his presence. Therefore the Lord in his wrath, for his anger was kindled against them, swore that they should not enter into his rest while in the wilderness, which rest is the fullness of his glory. Therefore God took Moses from their midst, and the holy priesthood also. But the Aaronic priesthood continued, through which the people were given the preparatory gospel and the law of Moses. In the law of Moses, the practice of offering sacrifice was expanded, and because sacrifice was symbolic of Christ's atonement, the law was referred to as a schoolmaster to bring Israel unto Christ. The relationship of blood sacrifice to the atonement of Christ was explained to Adam by an angel who said, This thing is a similitude of the sacrifice of the only begotten of the Father, which is full of grace and truth. Being a branch of Israel, the Nephites kept the law of Moses. See 2 Nephi 5, uh, 10. Yet they knew that the law was given because the Lord God saw that his people, the Israelites, were a stiff-necked people. They also understood that the intent of that law was to lead men to Christ. Nephi wrote, Behold, my soul delighteth in proving unto my people the truth of the coming of Christ, for for this end hath the law of Moses been given, and all things which have been given of God from the beginning of the world unto man are the typifying of him. Alma also taught that the law of Moses was a type of Christ's coming. To Abinadi it was a shadow of those things which are to come. He therefore declared that salvation cannot came not by the law of Moses, but through Christ. Said he, Were it not for the atonement which God himself shall make for the sins and iniquities of his people, they must unavoidably perish, notwithstanding the law of Moses. Nevertheless, Alma explained, the law of Moses did serve to strengthen their faith in Christ, and thus they did retain a hope through faith unto eternal salvation, relying upon the spirit of prophecy which spoke of those things to come. A classic statement concerning the law's relationship to Christ was made by Jacob. They, meaning the ancient prophets before his day, believed in Christ and worshipped the Father in his name, and also we worship the Father in his name, and for this intent we keep the law of Moses, it pointing our souls to him, and for this cause it is sanctified unto us for righteousness, even as it was accounted unto Abraham in the wilderness to be obedient unto the commands of Gad in offering up his son Isaac, which is a similitude of God and his only begotten son. Wherefore, we search the prophets, and we have many rele- revelations in the spirit of prophecy, and having all these witnesses, we obtain a hope, and our faith becometh unshaken. Though the law of Moses was a system of rituals and ordinances typifying Christ, it is only in Jesus that divine power is manifested to, to sanctify man. 
because his people had partaken of the divine powers of truth from Christ, Nephi wrote, Wherefore the law hath become dead unto us, and we are made alive in Christ because of our faith. He then observed, We speak concerning the law that our children may know the deadness of the law, and they, by knowing the deadness of the law, may look forward unto that life which is in Christ, and know for what end the law was given. The word of the Lord in the gospel of his life. Jesus said, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. Again, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. It is therefore written, The law was given through Moses, but life and truth came through Jesus Christ. For the law was after a carnal commandment to the administration of death, but the gospel was after the power of an endless life through Jesus Christ. Although the law of Moses has long since been fulfilled and the gospel has been restored in modern times, the people of God must always differentiate between the outward forms of the divine program and the inward powers of the Holy Spirit. They must see the difference between the means and the end. The end to be achieved is for man to establish a living spiritual union with Christ, to attain the blessings of the Holy Spirit until he is sanctified in truth and in the resurrection glorified in Christ.